Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and Assalamu Alaikum guys today the topic is internal structure of earth so as you can see in this diagram that is the uh, diagram of earth and the very first portion as you can see here right here that this is the crust then between the crust and the last one uh, core between there is a mantle and the third one is that is like this it is called as core the earth is divided into three main layers the first one is crust then mantle and the, then the core the crust is the outermost layer of the earth that is uh, represented here and mantle is the middle layer of the earth the green part that is the mantle and the third one is the innermost layer of the earth that is called as core the red part that is the core portion if we talk about the length or the depth of the of these earth layers into the earth surface so the first one is crust so crust nearly extends about uh, 50 kilometers beneath the earth's surface earth is basically the outer outer layer of the earth uh, so its depth its density its thickness is too uh, small but then comes as compared to mantle mantle is about 50 to 2900 kilometers beneath the earth's surface it is far far more thicker more denser than the crust then comes core core is divided into the outer core and the inner core so uh, the outer core nearly extends to 2900 to 5100 kilometers beneath the earth's surface and if we talk about the inner core it is 5100 to 6371 it means 6371 kilometers beneath the earth's surface as a whole the core thickness is 2250 kilometers so if you talk about the earth's layer composition of earth's layer that is that the crust is made of solid uh, soil water and rock and the mantle is hot part melted and melted and part solid iron and magnesium and the outer core as you can see here here that the blue colored part it is the crust that is the outermost layer of the earth and the red part red portion is mantle that is the most thicker part of the earth's uh, surface earth's layers and then the outer core that is orange uh, shaded part that is the outer core it is made of hot liquid nickel and iron there are uh, nickel and iron are found in large amount in, in outer core and then comes the inner core the innermost layer of the earth that is yellow shaded part it is made of solid nickel and iron so the very first layer of the earth's surface is crust the crust the outermost the surface layer of the earth the earth's crust is like the skin of an apple it can also be ref referred as the egg we uh, the egg has three main layers the first one it's shell then comes the white part and then comes the yolk the yellow part so the crust is also referred to the shell of an egg uh, and, or we can also uh, say that it is like the skin of an apple it is very thin com as compared to the other three layers and its depth is only five kilom 50 kilometers and the crust makes only up to one percent of the earth then the crust of the earth is broken into many pieces that is, these all pieces are called as plates the crust is the thinnest layer out of all the uh, three layers of the earth and there are two main types of crust the first one is continental crust and second one is oceanic crust so continental crust as it, it uh, its name is indicating that it is a kind of land and oceanic crust it is some sort of water so if we talk about the depth or extension of the continental and oceanic crust then we can say that uh, the crust is divided into two main parts continental and oceanic so the oceanic area or the water part of the crust is really small its depth is too small than the continental uh, continental crust because oceanic 
oceanic crust its um, its depth is only it extends about 5 to 8 kilometers but con in continental crust it extends up to 30 kilometers beneath the earth's surface so con oceanic crust is basically the upper part of the very upper part of the uh, crust but if you talk about the continental crust it is beneath the uh, oceanic crust and it extends up to 30 kilometers beneath the earth's surface in oceanic crust there are uh, there are found new rocks but if we talk about the continental crust there are found old rocks continental crust is a land surface so there there is found old rocks but in oceanic crust there are uh, the, the that's the surface under oceans so there are found new rocks and there are also soft uh, rocks but in continental crust hard rocks are present in oceanic crust as uh, they, their density is too much high but in continental crust if we talk about their density is too low so density is too low from 2.65 to 2.75 gram per cubic centimeter cube that's their density and that is too much low but if you talk about the oceanic crust density so that is just 3 to 4.75 gram per cubic centimeter so that's how we come to know that oceanic crust has more density has far more density than the continental crust then after the crust after the first layer or the outermost layer of the earth there comes the middle layer of the earth that is called as mantle mantle is the layer below the crust and the mantle is the largest layer of the earth because its thickness is far more larger than the other two layers the mantle is is the mostly solid layer between the core and the surface layer called as crust and this layer 84 percent of the total earth's volume lies within this mantle because as we have discussed in uh, in the part of uh, crust that crust covers only one percent of the total earth's surface but mantle covers 84 percent so that's how we can uh, we get to know that mantle has far more area uh, far more thickness far more area than that of other two layers and in mantle there are large amounts of iron and magnesium as we have discussed in the crust that there are that silicates are present there in a large amount but in mantle iron and magnesium are found in a far larger amount in the upper and the lower mantle so there are two main types of mantle or we can say the mantle is divided into two main regions the upper and lower sections or we can say the upper mantle and the lower mantle the mantle the upper mantle extends from the crust to the depth of 400 kilometers and it has mostly solid surface but has some malleable regions which contribute to tecton tectonic activity as well they have large amounts of iron uh, iron and magnesium and they upper mantle this is the ma uh, mantle that uh, that extends up to 2900 kilometers but if we talk about the upper mantle the the arrow in the um, the upper arrow that is the upper mantle and the uh, lower arrow is the lower mantle so the upper mantle ex uh, extends from the crust to the depth of 400 kilometers beneath the earth's surface and it has mostly solid surface but has some some malleable regions which contribute to tectonic activity as well and the upper mantle is found in viscous form so after the upper mantle after the upper mantle there comes our transition zone or we can say here like this is the mantle and between the up like if this is the upper mantle and this is the lower mantle so between the uh, upper and lower mantle there exists a zone that is called that zone is called as transition zone and this zone extends from 410 kilometers to 670 kilometers between the earth's surface and in this region rocks undergo structural changes making them much more dense and this is the 
this is the zone between the lower and upper mantle which prevents a large exchange of materials between the upper and lower mantle and within this transition zone there is an abundance of water existing as hydroxide and in this transition zone crystals are, found, are also found in this zone and they hold as much as water as earth's ocean combined so as we can say that in the uh, mantle area in the transition zone that is present between the lower and upper mantle water is found in abundant uh, abundant uh, abundance so after the um, transition zone and the upper mantle there comes the lower mantle so the lower a uh, lower arrow shows the lower mantle the location of lower mantle and it ex it extends from 670 kilometers or we can say it extends from the transition zone to the depth of six, uh, 2,230 kilometers below the Earth's surface. It is a lower mantle. In lower mantle, there are there um, happens so much tectonic activity, so much uh, this type of geological activities, due to which the temperature and the pressure are far more larger, um, far far more. La uh, higher than that of upper mantle and the transition zone so lower mantle is much hotter and denser than the upper mantle and transition zone and intense pressure keeps the lower mantle solid as we have um, discussed earlier that upper mantle is uh, is in viscous form but lower mantle is in pure solid form in the mantle mantle there is also a layer that is called as lithosphere and that is of most importance it is located above the mantle and below the crust so as you can see the red portion that is mantle and then the green portion that is the uh, that is the crust and then uh, between the crust and between uh, between the crust and mantle there is an orange layer that is called as lithosphere it is located above the mantle and below and below the crust so lithosphere is the solid outer part of our planet and it is composed of the rigid upper mantle as well as the crust and it is the crust is the outermost layer of the earth so lithosphere layer has two main types that is the continental and oceanic and which are the part of crust which we have discussed in the crust part earlier then comes another main layer that is called asthenosphere. Asthenosphere is the denser and the weaker and so semi-solid region beneath the lithospheric mantle or we can say it is the asthenosphere is the upper uh, or we can say it is the some, some portion of the upper mantle. So asthenosphere is the layer that means weak. And it has two, it has uh, an abundant amount of magma in it due to which it causes um, volcanic eruption. So uh, the two main layers, the lithosphere and, and asthenosphere uh, layers, these are of great importance because lithosphere is present between the uh, upper mantle and uh, the crust. But if we talk about the asthenosphere, asthenosphere is the portion of upper mantle and and it extends from about 350 kilometers to 500 kilometers beneath the Earth's surface and magma is found in it in large amount and it is the upper um, as it is uh, as we have discussed that the upper mantle is found in viscous form so the asthenosphere which is also a portion of upper mantle it is also found in plastic or molten or viscous form so that's how the mantle also comes to, comes to an end and then comes core. So core is the innermost layer of the earth's surface and innermost and the third layer of the earth's surface. The core is also divided into two main regions. The first one is outer core and the second one is inner core. So as you can see in this diagram that um, firstly there is a crust. So uh, uh, the first one, the upper or we can say the spiral shaped some area, the irregular shaped area that is the continental region, continental crust. And then the uh, blue side, dark blue, that is the 
continental crust uh, and beneath the um, both these areas there is a blue shaded area these uh, this is the crust area and then the orange and then the red shaded area the red shaded area is um, is the area of mantle and between the red shaded area and the brown shaded area there is a uh, orange area the these this orange shaded area is known as lithosphere as we have discussed in the previous slide that lithosphere is present between the crust and the upper mantle and upper mantle and lower mantle is a they are not represented here but there is upper mantle then the lower mantle and in the upper mantle there is there lies asthenosphere because it's the part of mantle so here in this slide, uh, in this slide we will discuss about the outer core the core of the earth is like ball very hot metals we can say so outer core is in a yellow shaded area the outer core is basically liquid and it is made of iron and it is very dense far dense uh, it is uh, very dense that its density extends from about 9.9 .9 to 12.2 gram cubic uh, per cubic uh, centimeter and uh, the outer core extends uh, extends from the uh, inner mantle to earth's surface as 400 to 5 uh, 20 uh, 250 kilometer so its thickness is 2000 at 250 kilometers but if we talk about its temperature the, its temperature extends from about 4000 to 5000 degrees celsius it means that as we go deep down in the earth's surface the pressure and the temperature starts to increase and the earth's layer starts to become more denser more and more so then comes the inner core the inner the very inner part of the earth's surface the scientists or the humans haven't um, reached to the inner core because as we go deep down the temperature and pressure starts to increase and our drilling uh, drilling has stopped uh, we can we can only move to uh, till the um, the upper mantle we can't uh, we don't have such resources and we don't have such machinery that we can drill the earth's surface to the inner core so inner core of the earth has temperatures and pressures so great that the metals are squeezed together and are not able to move so when the metals are squeezed together and they are unable to move so the inner core is perfectly solid and they can't uh, their particles can't move uh, here and there and their temperature ranges from 5000 to 7000 uh, degrees celsius and their density is far more higher than that of outer core that is of 12.8 gram per cubic centimeter to 13.1 gram per cubic centimeter so that's how we conclude that it is uh, its temperature its pressure its density is far more larger than any other layer of the earth and it extends from the outer core to the earth's surface to 12 till uh, to the depth of 1220 kilometers so its thickness is far uh, 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 smaller than the outer core but in the inner core iron is found in massive amount so as you can see this diagram that crust is the outermost layer of the earth and then comes upper mantle then mantle inner mantle then outer core and then comes the inner core so that's how the earth's surface the, the earth's internal structure of the earth is uh, explained right over here i hope i have delivered my message i hope i have delivered my lecture to you in a very convenient and very in very easiest way so we shall meet in the next video till then take care allah hafiz